of all the things that are out there, and, and I want to be very, very clear here, by no stretch am I a, a warrior insider. I'm not reporting anything. I'm telling you what I would want to do if all things were available. All things aren't available, but of all the things I hear, um, what makes the most sense to me if you're the Warriors and you're obsessed with these last two years of Steph Curry's contract and Steve Kerr's contract and all of that stuff, if you are obsessed with the next two years, there's one guy to go get, and his name is Kevin Durant. He's got two years left on his deal, and in a world where the NBA shows us every year that continuity is what wins, look at the last handful of championships. Tell me who won by throwing the team together six months before they played. Nobody. That's incredibly rare. Boston, got to go through it. You got to get knocked off the pedestal, come back, you win a championship. Denver, been together for a while. Warriors, don't need to tell you that one. Continuity plays in the NBA. If I've only got two years left and I'm obsessed, I don't want to go find a new key number two and then spend half the year figuring out how to play together. I got someone who already knows how to do it. That's the guy I'd like to go see the Warriors get. 36-year-old Kevin Durant. That's the one. Turning 36 in September. So Same thing you go for from Steph Curry. Old to equally old, if not older. You go from a 34-year-old Clay to a 36-year-old KD, and you figure that that's going to be the best solution. I'm not saying that you're necessarily wrong, but and I don't know what other choice you have. You're not going to be able to go out and find good younger players for the most part, so you probably do have to double down on the age. Well, and, and the age thing is funny to me because I feel like we're only using that on certain players. Um, Kevin Durant, to me, body-wise, I feel like is playing at a higher level right now than Clay Thompson or Jimmy Butler. These are all mid-30s players. And Draymond Kevin's, Green, you know, all fine. of them. That's fine. Draymond is not, you know what I mean? That's That's sort of a different... Arena, if you ask me, he's signed. Yeah. KD he's, played 37 minutes a game last year, uh-huh. and he played 75 games. He played really well. Yeah, he played, played great, really but well. he was healthy, he was durable, and he played a ton. To your point about his 36-year-old body, he's an older player, but he's playing a lot of minutes, and he's been healthy other than the Achilles injury, which is now five years ago. Yeah, man, I just, I mean, I look at Kevin, and, and, and I know people will go, gosh, that's old, but I've heard a lot of you get excited about Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler's what? Maybe six months younger? Something like that. And his body has way been been way breaking down way more in recent years than than Kevin's has. Plus, uh Jimmy wears people out. Like <laughs> Jimmy comes in and, and two years later everybody wants to get rid of him. And Jimmy would be brand new. How would Jimmy and Steph mix? I have no clue. Right. I have no clue. Would Kevin want to be back? No idea. No idea. I'm not saying that this is all like just okay, sign, seal, deliver. It's done. There are things to figure out. That's just my wish list. My wish list is Kevin Durant, number one on the list. Yeah, no matter what it would cost you, I suppose, because I do no, think that no would cost what. you Kaminga. It's going to cost you Kaminga, and I don't know how you make the Chris Paul part of it actually work because I don't think that Phoenix is necessarily going to be in the mode of let's take a thirty million dollar contract back and then just not even have that player play for us. I don't think that they are in the same mindset that you're putting them in. I can't speak to it. I don't work in that organization, but I don't feel like Phoenix is going to be in straight give up mode where you give up Kevin Durant, a top 15 player still in the league and you get back not much. I just don't see that from Phoenix. Well, I don't I don't see it as not much and and if you listen to the team's talk, uh, what I hear everybody talking about right now is is money. That's what I hear everybody talking about. That's what the Warriors want relief from. That's what a lot of these teams want relief from. I don't see it as giving up. I see them as as admitting a mistake. You know, they 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 built a roster that was not intuitive, and it was very very top heavy and very big salary heavy, and it it, it fell woefully short. They got worse. They got worse right. when they brought in Bradley Beal. Not even close. They have no point guard. They have no idea on the offensive end. Who's who's doing exactly what? And think about this: if if, if Geltziler and he came on with uh, with Steiny and Evan just a just a short hour and a half ago, and he said he keeps hearing building buzz about Kevin Durant. Well, go back to what the Sun said publicly 
two months ago. What'd they say? Oh, we love Kevin Durant. Not only do they love Kevin Durant, they wanted to make the whole organization about him. We got to figure out how to package and highlight Kevin Durant. Remember the GM? No yep. one's ever done it before. Draymond's like, excuse me? <laughs> no one's you, ever maximized you Kevin miss Durant a before. few years of the NBA? <laughs> uh, do, we, do we need to send you some videotapes or something? The Suns were all about Kevin Durant. And now, now he's on the trade market. That tells me exactly what you're saying maybe is not the case. I would read as maybe is the case. I don't think that the Suns are suddenly going, you know what, this is how we can be really good next year is we can trade Kevin Durant. I think they realize one of two, if not both things. Kevin's still not happy. Kevin's not optimistic. And then the second thing is, there is no way out of this maze without getting one of these massive contracts out of here. Right. And you don't do that by bringing in someone that's going to make, you know, almost as much. Like, what? what's Jonathan about to get? 30? Kaminga? Yeah. Eh, probably between 25 and 30. Oof. I, like, he he's going to get what Jordan got, if not more. Um, I don't know what the max scale extension, right. whatever it is. But if, if well, he's not going to get the max. Tyrese Max, he's going to get the max, and that's closer. To, I think thirty-five or more for a player at that stage of their career. It's not the super max because you have to be a veteran sure. for that. But it's going to be a big piece. I don't think that it's going to be more than thirty million a year. But I do think that if you're Phoenix, you know you don't have to pay Kaminga right away. I mean, you have to give him the extension, but it doesn't kick in for another year. So that gives you another year to kind of figure out. If that's something that you want to hold on to, I hear you. I just, I, I think that their situation is more dire than maybe people realize when you look at what they've got going on and, and, and make they've no got 150 mistake. million between three guys. And right now they've got more than 200 on the books for next year. Right. Which puts them in the, in and above the second apron. But Beal, like, as you said, well, let's, let's it gives them another year to figure it out. You're not going to figure it out. Beal's got three more fully guaranteed years. No. And with a, uh, no trade clause. Yes. And Booker's got four more years. The, the Bradley, fully guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. Well, Booker, you want Beal's the one they would love to kick to the curb in the year 2026, 27. Okay. Two plus years from where we sit right now, Bradley Beal will make fifty-seven million dollars yeah. to be a mediocre player for the Phoenix Suns. They're not in a good spot. They got to figure a way out. And if I'm them, that is the route that I would take. If I've got a disgruntled Kevin Durant, absolutely no real hope of of winning with the roster as currently constructed. I want young pieces. I want draft picks. I want salary relief. And I understand what you're saying. Who wouldn't want Jonathan Kaminga, age 22? I totally understand that. I just don't think they're in a spot to demand it. And what they might, if they did put Kevin Durant out of the market, what they can sort of demand in return is is probably not what we think it would be. Just because how many teams are there that are like, yes, yes, 51 and $54 million for two more years, age 36 and 37, plus we have enough to give you in return to make that happen, we'll still stay whole. And that will, like, I just don't think that's a long list of teams. It doesn't have to be a long list. It just has to be a couple, two, three teams. That's and fair. Brian Geltziler was talking about Houston as a team. And yep. I know Orlando's got a lot of cap room. I don't know if they have necessarily the big contracts to send back, but I'm sure there are enough two or three teams out there. I haven't researched every team's cap situation, but you could find teams that are out there that have the ability to make that move. And the other piece for the Warriors is they have to be out of the second apron in order to make this trade even a possibility. Otherwise, they can't take on even one more dollar than they send out. Which I think was a premise that we were working with a handful of weeks ago, thinking that we were believing them when they were like, we must have Clay Thompson back. Um, well, now we're like, oh, you were kidding. So right. um, uh, July 1st, they're out of the second apron. Yeah. Because Clay, Clay is probably going to walk. So, yeah. there, so there's 43 million bucks. Right. So then you can only take on a percentage of the money back that you're sending out. So you can financially probably make it work. But my big thing that makes me have pause is the fact that I think there will be other teams that are going to be competitive for Kevin Durant if, in fact, he is out there on the market. You may well be right. I just see the Chris Paul contract as a weapon that most teams don't have. And that is, you know, like take Houston, for example. 
Who the hell is Houston going to send to Phoenix to add up to $51 million? Who do they even have to do that with? And, and if they did do that, what are they left with? They don't even have that many good players. They've so, got uh, Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet. There's okay. your guy. Making well, 42 next year. And how many more years after? One. Okay. All it's right. a team option, too. So if you're Houston, you, you're dangling Freddie, a guy who can play point guard, and you're saying, all right, Phoenix, here's your point guard for it's one a, more year. It's a fair rebuttal. And it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't give them necessarily the financial immediate relief that they would want, but it is a team option the year after that. So it would be a one-year pill that they had to swallow, Phoenix, and maybe you look at Fred Van Vliet and say, Here's a guy who actually may help us. Maybe. How old's Fred? He's 30. Okay. 30. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. That's a maybe. And they've got Steven Adams making 12-6 on a, uh, in last year of his deal. See, but but everything you're just throwing at me. like Dylan Brooks, but there's your no, guy. Yeah, there's, there's nothing there that's going to make Phoenix call the Warriors and be like, nope, we demand Kaminga. No, I mean, okay. Yeah, but if it's Fred Van Vliet, Fred Van Vliet and, you know, Jock Landale, which adds up to Kevin Durant and a couple of first round picks. Wouldn't you rather, uh, would you rather right now, if I'm Phoenix, would I? Would you rather have Fred Van Vliet at 42 or salary relief? I'd rather have Fred Van Vliet yeah, because I don't I, he's an actual way. player. Yeah, but you're not going to like. Chris Paul is a 39 year old backup. But that gets you, but you, it's not Chris Paul. It's just right, the money. So I, if I'm Phoenix, it's I want a player. Money. I don't want to have. Why? Because I still think that I'm good. You ah, don't think they're good. Ah. You don't think they're good. Neither do they. They think they're good. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Why do they think that? Because they have two of the great players in the league. Bradley Beal without Kevin Durant can still be a great player. Dan Dibley. You don't think so? Look me you think in he's the eyes. done? Look me in the eyes. Why was Bradley Beal bad last year? Why was Bradley Beal bad last Why year? Why were they bad Bradley last Beal year? Bradley Beal has been an irrelevant player in the league largely his entire career. Bradley Beal has been is, a very good player on bad teams. Uh, uh, <laughs> there you go. Irrelevant right. player. He is Jordan Poole. He is what Steve Francis used to be. He is all of these players. James Harden. It's uh, Empty numbers. It's just empty numbers. It's never going to add up to anything. He proved it last year. The Phoenix Suns, I don't believe, are under some sort of an idea that they're a Fred Van Vliet away from competing with Denver and Dallas and Minnesota next year. I don't think that they see themselves as a team that is desperate for a rebuild. Okay. Which is the way you're portraying it, and we'll I see. Think, I think that they are in financial hell, and I think that owners – Think about this stuff differently than we do. Of course. We're out here in fan land. We love it. We love basketball. They love money. They love money. And so if I'm Phoenix, the way I've assessed what they're looking at and also basing it on what I think it means if Durant is clearly available, like if Phoenix thought they were going to be good next year, I got an idea. Keep Kevin. That's the best player you can get. Well, they're in the second apron, so yeah. and you know that there are many punishments for being up there in, in repeat years. Absolutely. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seventy.